Hi everyone, uh, I'm Harry Gold and I'm going to be your uh, presenter for the session. Um, and this is uh, Quick Start Marketing Automation. Uh, quick question, um, how, uh, just to gauge who's in the audience and kind of what you do. How many people here are from, you know, client-side companies? And how many are agencies or marketers? And how many are actively sort of using marketing automation platforms? You have something already intact. Okay, and out of people who have it, how many do you feel are making, fully utilizing it? None, right, see that's always the, that's why we're here. <clears throat> so this is quick start marketing automation um, because what, what we found is that, you know, all roads lead to Aliqua, Marketo, Aprimo, Acton, some kind of platform, and then very little kind of happens after that. Um, so we're gonna jump in and help orient people's thinking um, about how to approach marketing automation. Uh, very quickly, Overdrive Interactive, digital marketing firm, we do all of this stuff, helping companies create success online. And a lot of our clients are tech B2B. If you're in Massachusetts, obviously you're gonna work for a lot of tech B2B clients. And really all of them have some sort of marketing automation platform that their leads poured into. So we're intimately familiar with marketing automation. We also know that the ROI of our paid search programs or SEO programs or whatever we do are very dependent on these companies' ability to capture leads and then nurture them into opportunities. So I want to start broad and talk about digital marketing and how it's all kind of blurring together um, where you, know, you can't just do one thing. Everything is synergistic or dependent on another component. So you have SEO, you have paid search, online media, social media, creative and website development, email and marketing automation and analytics. And all of this is coming together. And I'll give you a few examples. If you're doing paid search, you get all these clicks, you've got to have great landing pages to actually get people to do what you want them to do. Media on its own doesn't get people to do anything. Right? It doesn't get them to click, it doesn't get them to convert, it doesn't get them to call. If done well, it puts your message in front of the right people, hopefully at the right time. It's the creative that gets them to do something. So a lot of people say, well, what is the average return I should expect? Or, you know, what is the right frequency or cadence of something? That's not as important as, you know, because I've had, you know, you could have one email that does better than 10 emails if the offer and the creative is good. Now what happens? They convert here. Now if you have an expensive tech B2B product, no one's buying it off the landing page. What you were selling on that landing page was them filling out the form. Now they've gone into your marketing automation system. And that's where things very often come to a screeching halt. Because the salespeople don't want to call people who just downloaded a white paper. And meanwhile, if you're doing batch of blast, they might not get an email from you for three, four weeks. And by then they've kind of forgotten who you are. So it's all intertwined. And then, by the way, you're measuring everything. You're setting cookies on people's browsers, and now you're following them around the web with retargeting and stuff like that. So all this stuff's working together. And if you get it working together, what you can build is some sort of marketing infrastructure that might look something like this. And we call this drive, capture, convert, optimize. You start with your brand, and then you do all this stuff to drive traffic. Search, online media, social media. You're driving into landing pages and your website and webinars and trade shows and call centers. You're capturing that information and you're putting that into convert. And that's where marketing automation lives. So with convert, you're pushing out email, direct mail, maybe even social posts and things like that, trying to drive people back through capture to get them to raise their hand, right? To get them to say, okay, I'm ready to talk to you. And that's the whole idea of nurture, right? And then we want to measure, we want to optimize, we want to report on what works and what doesn't work and quickly stop doing those things that don't work and focus our efforts into those things that do work. So this is drive, capture, convert, optimize. And marketing automation lives right here. So 
you know, what's happening in today's marketplace? We're going from advertising and marketing that was throw impressions at people and get a response and get something back to creating what we call the brand embrace. The brand embrace is the sum total of all these digital connections we're making with people. Companies are, you know, we've all heard paid, earned, and owned. The brand embrace is over here in owned and leans into earned, right? The brand embrace is your email file, your Facebook fans, your Twitter followers, your LinkedIn followers, site engagement, retargeting, your snail mail list, and of course, marketing automation. It's all those digital connections that you are making with your target audience. Now, we've all been so greedy about making these connections, but then the reality is that people do very little in terms of actually leveraging those connections. And that's what we're gonna talk about today with marketing automation. So this is a very short list of marketing automation and CRM platforms. I could create you know, a huge logo slide of you know, the marketing technology companies out there that help you leverage your brand embrace. But these are the big ones that we're typically dealing with. How many people here are, you know, have used Eloqua? Do we have an Eloqua? Okay. Marketo, Acton, uh, Aprimo, HubSpot, right? Okay, so, you know, and Salesforce, everyone has Salesforce, right? So these are the things we gotta get to work together. So let me just give everyone sort of, it seems like most people know how it works, but let me give you the quick rundown of marketing automation, uh, capturing and cookieing. I don't, you know, we, we gotta make a word for that. Profiling and scoring prospects. Here's what happens, right? And, and again, it's gonna be familiar to most of you. Here's a prospect, they come to your website. Well, what happens is immediately the marketing automation platform will set a cookie on their browser. We don't know who you are, but we've cookied you. Now you fill out a form, and that goes in our CRM system. Here's the key thing that marketing automation did. It connected cookie data with your actual contact information, and it started to score and segment it. It started to build up data. So that's the special thing that's happening. So what happens is, first of all, we've put all that together, and now I can kick out a very targeted and very relevant auto-reply instantly based on who you are, what keyword you came in off uh, you know, in, a, in a paid search program, what products you looked at, all of these different things. And oh, by the way, I can also send an alert to my salesperson telling them what you looked at, so they have a little intelligence on you. And oh, you can ping a print-on-demand server and actually get something out in the mail as well. It's not just email. So, so now you're kicking out timely emails that are coming out the moment someone engaged with you, not three weeks later when they kind of, they're not in buy mode anymore. So then what happens and what's special about marketing automation is if they come back to your site later and they don't fill out a form, but they look at pricing, or they do some kind of behavior that indicates they're in buy mode, again, same thing. You, you recognize them from their cookie, and you know who they are, again, hey, Bill Stone just came back to my website, he's looking at pricing, hit him with an email, oh, you know, and tell Eric Wally, our sales guy, to pick up the phone and call Bill, because he was just on our site looking at what we sell. Okay, that is sort of the essence of marketing automation. That is the advantage of putting your cookie data together with your customer file. So the idea is your brand embrace comes in when you've done this tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of times, and you've got this big database of prospects with cookies. These in Eloqua speak are called named leads. Now what you're doing is instead of batching and blasting email, you're sending out this steady current of extremely timely email, sales alerts, and direct mail pieces based on people's triggers, based on people's user behavior. 
And what should happen is your response rate should go, out, go up because of two things. Your stuff is more timely. You're, getting it, you're sending it out at the right time. And it's more relevant because this cookie data combined with the customer record is now being appended with all of this data that lets you customize your communications. Questions on everyone get that? Okay. So what I want to talk about are triggered events and nurture campaigns. Um, you know, you got to start somewhere. Because everything we're doing out there with all this marketing, and again, if you have a lot of tech B2B clients like I do, or you're a B2B company, and it could be B2C too, but typically a B2B company, and you're doing all this stuff, typically what's happening is everything you do are driving contacts into Marketo, Eloqua, and, and again, it's frustrating because you know on the demand generation side, you're generating all these leads, and then it kind of like stops short. And we've all heard salespeople say how horrible our leads are, right? So we have to nurture those leads. We have to get much more involved with the nurture portion of that. So again, uh, just a quick representation of a very simple drip campaign. So let's call this a drumbeat or something like that. First of all, what's great about it is you're not scrambling around saying, what am I going to send out this week? Um, so here's me. You know, let's say I sign up for a tip program. I get tip one, tip two, week three. Ty signs up. He gets tip three. I'm getting tip one. And then week, uh, you know, week six, Andrew signs up. And, you know, we're all at, you know, even though at the same time we're at different sequences. So I'm getting tip six. Ty's getting tip four. Andrew's getting tip one, and then we go through this prospect and it process and, and, and it goes into the future. Why is this really great? Um, well, a couple reasons. One, if I'm using a good marketing automation platform, I'm a CEO, so I'm getting the little call to action for the C-level people in there. I'm customizing the content of the email. Ties in marketing, he's getting the same general industry content, but he's getting a little bit of content on an offer that's for marketing, and Andrew is in the tech department. He's getting something that's relevant to him in tech. So he's getting benefit statements and offers in tech, right? So it's automated. Set it and forget it. Well, sort of, right? I mean, but, but essentially what's happening is I developed all these great tips, and now I'm making sure they're being sequenced out. So even though Andrew signed up way over here, he's not getting tip six. He's getting tip one, right? So we've, we've set up this drumbeat, and we're able to put out timeless valuable content that hopefully they want to read, but we're also able to set in customized messaging. So there's no wasted content. You're not script and content's hard. Good content's really hard to do. And so when you come up with a good tip or a good email or a good offer, you don't want to just send it once and then have to keep track of who signed up when. You want to sequence it. Um, and you can personalize it and customize it. And again, finally, it's timely. You know, one of the problems with Batch and Blast is someone be signs up, downloads a white paper, and if you don't send another email for three weeks, by the time they get that email, they may not even remember who you are. They might have happened upon your content, downloaded it, and then sort of forgot about it. So the other thing is the timeliness. Engaging with people close to that moment where, they're, where they engaged with or, more importantly, discovered your brand. Questions? Good. Okay, so let's look at like possible ROI of good nurture, okay? So, and this is an actual client had this scenario, okay? The benchmark was they drove about 20,000 trial downloads of their software from all their marketing activities. And about a third of the people would actually activate it. So two thirds would download it and then never even bother to activate it. So they'd get about 6,600 leads. 20% uh, of those would actually convert into like opportunities where they used it and they, you know, and they started engaging in conversation. And about 10% of those people actually converted, and it equaled about 6.6 .6 million in revenue for the first year of that customer. 
if 50% renewed, they'd get about 9.9 .9 million in revenue in two years. Uh, you know, so the, the customer value over two years was about 9.9 .9 million. So look at this. If you improve nurture by just 10%, so you convert a few more trials into leads, right, by getting them to activate. So you have a nurture program that's all about getting them to activate their trial, helping them through that, giving them support through that process, letting them know that support's available. You get to this number. You convert t just 2% more of those people into opportunities, just 2% more. You get more ops. You convert 1% more into a customer. There's your first year revenue. You get just 5% more of those people to renew by staying engaged with them once they become your customer. This is another thing that people do. Someone becomes your customer and you're like, okay, on to the next customer. You gotta pay attention to your current customers. Look what happens to the revenue. The revenue goes up 38%. Your year two value is up to 13 million. 20% improvement. Your incremental revenue is 8.3 million. 84% increase in the customer value. 30% improvement, 142% increase. Look at that. You improve your nurture by 30%, which is not possible. Look what you do. You turn two years of revenue from 9.9 .9 million to 23 million. So meanwhile, you got companies shoveling out more money in the media, which don't get me wrong, I love that because we do a lot of media buying, but at the end of the day, they've got to get a return on that. And, and you know, same level of performance, but if you invest a little in a good nurture program, look at the ROI. I mean, we've all handed leads to salespeople and you got one guy who doesn't sell anything and you got another guy who sells a lot, right? There's a difference in the way that you treat leads. So you want to look at all those points of conversion and say, how can we improve the escalation process? And that's what marketing automation does for you. So you know you want it, right? No one's going to look at that and go, ah, we don't need that. <coughs> but here's the current situation. Most large companies we work with, They've, they've got the platform, they've hired the in-house administrator because after you buy this thing you realize, oh, we need someone to run it. Um, they know they need to improve it and they want to improve the process. The situation is they're only taking advantage of a small portion of the marketing tactics. They're still doing batch and blast, so they're just using it like constant contact. They're experiencing decline from their batch and blast because they're burning their lists out and they just can't get the nurture campaigns off the ground. Why is that? I'll tell you why. Because a lot of them don't know where to start, they've been sold a platform, and the case studies they saw was a company that was fully implemented and completely set up. So they want to go from zero to 100. You know, this stuff evolves over time. The other thing is, and this is the big one, they underestimate the volume of creative involved in setting these things up. And they underestimate the value of good creative. So they have like an Aliqua administrator who knows how to like, who's a tech person. They're not a creative person. They don't write copy. They're not a graphic designer. They don't necessarily even understand what makes people convert. It's still advertising. It's still marketing. This is the big barrier, okay? So we're going to start, what we're going to talk about, and how many, is it client type people? Is this like, resonate? this is the situation, right? Okay. So here's the thing. Here's the quick start mantra, right? Don't overthink it. Just do it. Get the stuff off the ground. Start with the obvious. You don't have to do everything at once. Focus where volume and value lives. High frequency events, auto replies, form fills, repeat visits. Stuff that happens a lot. And by the way, it doesn't have to be a sequence of 10 emails. In fact, that's not always a good thing to do. Because a lot of companies have these governors, like no one can get more than one email a week. So sometimes you want to identify those quick hits. Like what is the one email I can send in response to something? 
there's high value leads. So okay, you've scored something. This is a high value lead. Let's be let's treat this um, with the attention it deserves. And then high volume databases. So I got a lot of cold leads. How do I get more out of this? And don't feel like things have to be complex. Some communication is better than no communication, as long as the creative is good. Communication with bad creative is bad. So uh, I think the arrow isn't really coming out too well in here, but there's an arrow behind all of those sort of pointing at this process. So this is quick start, all right? This is like the things you gotta get your head around to launch a campaign. The first are triggers. You know, what, you know, was it a trial? Was it an asset download? Is it a return visit? Is it manual? Is it, you know, that someone in, in Salesforce said, ooh, I just entered a lead and click, start a nurture campaign with them. Or is it a drumbeat? Is it the thing like that tips program I showed you that's just going out to everyone? What are your segments? So how are you segmenting people and what are their personas and pain points? Then you gotta create all your stuff, right? Your emails, your landing pages, your white papers, your offers, the sequence, the call scripts. And then there's launch. We are not gonna go deep on launch. This is a more technical thing. We are gonna focus on the creative and the planning and creative side. We're gonna let your tech people worry about implementing it, but we're gonna package it all up and hand it to them ready to go. So let's talk about triggers. A trigger is the thing that initiates the one email to 100 email or 100 piece marketing automation plan, okay? You got trials, assets, returns, all these different things. So again, start with the obvious. Obviously, form completes and asset downloads, right? So when someone fills out a form, you want an instant auto-reply going out. Even if you're delivering the white paper there on the page, you still want something immediately going out saying, hey, thanks for downloading that. Here's another way to get it. Here's more stuff. I can't tell you how many times people thought they were being smart. Don't give them the white paper on the landing page or they won't put their correct email in. And there's some truth to that. So then you just get this email and it's one line. Thanks, get your white paper here. You just wasted that huge opportunity to like, put more stuff in their email, right? Bad creative. High intensity escalation nurture, right? So like, okay, we just interacted with them, let's, let, and they're a valuable lead, let's do something with a certain level of intensity. Trial and freemium downloads, so trial downloads of software. Return site visitors, this is a big one. We know who they are, they came back. Again, and you don't even, and, and remember, they came back to your site, it, it, they don't have to get an email at that moment. You should send them an email. You could trigger a direct mail piece, but you could simply just let the salesperson know, uh, by the way, John Smith just came to the website and was looking at pricing. You might want to give that guy a call. And then there's cold leads. What do we do with all of them? And there's anonymous visits retargeting. Yes, retargeting is nurture. And we're going to talk about that. So obviously, the big one is, look at all your forms, and what are the triggers, what are the auto-replies going out against your forms? So there, there are standard triggers that we all think of, email, direct mail, CRM alert, you know, alerts, all those things. And then there's some advanced things you can trigger as well, like adaptive web content based on IP address and SIC code, or the customer profile, and banner retargeting. Let's take a look at those. So here was a client, this is a, you know, this was, it's a little dated, but I'll show, you know. What we got was a lot of these download library form fills. Like people just went in and said, okay, I need to get in. I want to see your downloads and your white papers and stuff like that. You know, they'd fill out a form. Salespeople of this organization wouldn't go near these leads. They hated them. We got thousands of them in a month, but they wouldn't touch them. Because these people were requesting information. They weren't saying, call me. They weren't saying, how much, what, what, what salespeople at this company reacted to were requests for quotes. People who said, I want this thing, how much is it? Those converted at about 
So what we would do is just immediately hit them with an auto reply email saying, thanks for accessing the download library. By the way, here's all the products that we have. Would you like a quote? And we would personalize it with the contact information of the salesperson. So they would click on it and go to a quote request form. That's immediate escalation. Requests for quotes went up 20% just by doing that one thing. So how easy is that, right? I didn't plan this whole sequence. What we identified were, what, you know, what are all the little, let's start, let's, let's start this in a way that's easy. What are the auto replies? And what are the things that we want people to do? And how do we instantly escalate a lead to an opportunity with good creative and the right messaging? Get a quote. I call it the power of how much. When you look at something you want, what do you think immediately? How much? Right? And the other thing is, you're going to give people real information when you're asking them how much because they need to get back to you with a price. Um, then there's what we were talking about before, uh, reverse IP lookup. So everyone here is familiar with reverse IP lookup at this point? Where we can actually, so this is, this is uh, we use something called Visitor Track, and you can see that I'm able to look at all these huge companies hitting my site. It's always very exciting to me, you know, where, you know, I'll look at something and I'll say, oh, look at, you know, I got, I got, you know, uh, um, AMD and Allstate and Accenture and Abbott Labs and Black and Decker, all these great companies hitting my website. It's very exciting to look at, but it also gives me context around, even though people are filling out fake information or only 3% of people come to my site convert, it still gives me a lot of context over what companies are becoming aware of my company. But how do I reach them if they don't fill out a form? And I know that all these amazing companies are researching my services and hitting my site. That's where retargeting comes in. But you can also do very interesting, adaptive, or web customization based on IP address. So you can take that company instantly with a third-party data source, or Marketo does this and Eloqua does it, matches it to an SIC code. So look, someone comes in and they're from aerospace, you have an aerospace image. If they come in and they're from defense, you can instantly adapt the image and maybe a little bit of copy to defense or IT, or telecommunications. So again, that's an easy thing to instantly do. I've got this real estate, I'm gonna match up, I'm gonna put in 10 business, you know, there's gonna be a default, I don't know who it is, show the default, but ah, I can tell, this is a telecommunications company. Show a telecommunications case study, right? So that's, again, a real easy thing that when people hit your site, they're gonna go, ah, I've come to the right place. That's a pretty big realization for a prospect to have when they visit your site. So first, you do, you adapt the content to their industry. Second, you can use the Google Display Network or other retargeting networks. So we all know how retargeting lives. We log on to Zappos. We abandon the shopping cart and suddenly you're being followed around the web by a Zappos ad with the very boots you looked at, right? So that's how it works. Someone comes to your site and you set a cookie on their browser and now you can follow them around the web and the more you, know, you build up this community of customers and prospects and you're nurturing them all over the web. And everyone thinks, oh, once they convert, we turn it off. No. Then you reset the cookie and instead of trying to get them to fill out a form again, now what you're trying to do is convince them of your leadership. You are nurturing them through media, which, oh, by the way, you can reach them a lot more reliably than you can with email or phone calls, because not everyone opens their email, not everyone takes phone calls. So this is another way to get in front of them. So you can nurture them with media. And it's not huge money, because we're not talking about a huge universe of people. We're talking about you know, a few thousand people. So I was trying to sort of say, look, don't think of nurture as just email, right? It's adaptive web. 
and it can be extended in the media. Questions on triggers? Good, it's so clear. You guys are like, I got it. Okay. <clears throat> so now let's talk about segmentation. Again, you know, you could talk all day about segmentation, but here's the reality with marketing automation. You can't segment into 100 groups. You'll never create enough unique creative to accommodate 100 groups. You kind of got to like create some bigger buckets. But what you do have to understand is their persona and their pain points, their score or their stage, kind of like how valuable they are as a lead and what stage in the buying process are there. Are they maybe they're vertical or horizontal? What industry they're in? Are they IT? Are they marketing? What product and service are they looking at on your site? And finally, geography. That makes a big difference. Because can you go up the street and meet with them in person? Or is it a distant sale where you're not going to offer to walk in the door and present a bunch of case studies? So your segmentation process, obviously, industry, geography, product interest, you know, what are those big buckets that you immediately want to start to automatically put those leads into? The score, you know, what did they look at? Did they go to your pricing sheet? Did they hit your contact form but then chicken out? Uh, what is their title or role? Is it an administrator or is it a CEO? Right? If it's a decision maker, you might escalate that much faster. What's the company size? Is it Joe's Pizza or is it Domino's Pizza? and persona creation. Okay, and this is really important because once you understand your segments, you gotta start to go, what's the persona of a lot of people in this segment because that's what I'm doing creative against. That's what I'm formulating offers against. That's what I'm performing, um, creating thought leadership materials against. And again, you can't have 100 personas. You'll just never, you'll never produce that much creative. And then finally, track mapping. Okay, so now I've got these personas. What are the different tracks I'm gonna send them down? <clears throat> now, I just wanna get a little advanced and talk about profiling and appending data. So first of all, um, immediately you're gonna get the lead type, okay? So in marketing automation speak, you get a contact. That's where you might have manually entered something into Salesforce. Um, you only have their name, but you don't have their cookie set. You have unnamed, which is unnamed leads and eloquent speak, which is, I don't have their name, but I've set a cookie on their browser, and I know what industry they came from, I know what keyword they came from, I know, uh, you know what they looked at on my site, and then you have the named lead, which is cookie and contact information. That's sort of the holy grail of what you're going after. Then you can start to manually append data. So maybe the sales rep is entering stuff related to that that's influencing your marketing automation. Maybe it's third party data that you're matching up to it. And then there's active append. What is, this is my terminology, but active append is um, the user themselves have come back to your website and they're engaging in more, you know, they're, they're volunteering more information by filling out web forms and surveys and things like that. So they know they're giving you information. But there's this other thing, passive append. So this is where technology is, is doing a couple things. One is it's tracking their online behavior. So again, they're com they come back, they've looked at this, they've looked at this case study, they've looked at these different things, and what Eloqua or Primo or Marketo is doing is it's sitting there and it's logging this behavior to influence their score what actions you take against it, and also, of course, the salesperson. They're getting an alert, like, hey, Bill just came back. He looked at this, this, and this, and it's informing your salespeople on how they can better sell to that client. And also, there are things going out and sort of like grabbing social data. Um, so these are the different ways that you are like starting to gain intelligence on that particular prospect. So once you've done that, you can do two things. Triggered events and nurture tracks, okay? So again, the trigger, triggered events are those instant auto replies. That one email, that one call, that thing that happens right away, right at the critical moment. And really what you should be doing is encouraging contact. 
they just downloaded a white paper. You don't have to offer them another one. They might not have an appetite at that moment for another one. But you should say, thanks for downloading that. I'm Joe. I'm your sales rep. If you need a quote, if you need anything, we're here for you, whatever it is. Um, maybe you're going to do an immediate SIC code, homepage swap out of the graphics, things like that. Um, and then again, there's the trigger from the instant revisit. So they came back to your website, maybe not at that minute, but maybe a couple hours later, 24 hours later, they're going to get another little nugget, another little touch from you. Then there's nurture tracks. And this is where you have to sit down and say, what are the tracks we're going to create based on the important personas? So I just did this, you know, the way we look at the world is I look at the world as local high value tech B2B. If you are local, if you are tech B2B and you're a big company, I want to talk to you. And I'm going to give you offers like, you know, I'll come in and do a training, I'll do a case study presentation. Why? Because I can hop in my car and go do that. Now, if you're from San Francisco, I'm not going to offer to hop in my car and come and see you, right? So that's why local matters, you know? If you have sales reps all over the country, you know, you could draw a circle, which is, you know, maybe 50 miles within that sales rep, and they can be much more responsive in terms of meeting with them right away. So I've got local, national, tech B2, high value tech B2B, same with financial, we love working for financial companies. Then there's local, high value general, national, high value general, and then brand drumbeat, which is just sort of cold leads, and we're just sort of sending them stuff and staying on their radar screen. So you want to understand your tracks. Now you want to start to develop personas around those tracks, around those people who are going to fit into those tracks. And we're going to, I'm just going to go through this quickly and then we're going to save it for later. But basically, let's say VP of digital marketing at a tech B2B company, they're responsible for the vision um, to drive the global e-commerce business. He or she has P&L responsibility for all digital. This includes digital strategy, online marketing, and website operations. Um, they have lead goal, pipeline development, and revenue numbers to hit. They're under a lot of pressure. So what keeps him or her up at night? Lack of resources. They're all like, I can't get stuff done. I can't you know, get talent. Um, I can't keep up with my to-do list. Um, speed to market, lack of control. I'm in marketing, yet I have to go through IT to get anything done. It takes me a week to get a landing page up. You know, I have lack of control. Lead quality. I generate all these leads and then sales tells me these are no good. I need a better way to nurture these leads and warm them and hand better leads off to sales so they, so they actually sell to these people. So I hit my revenue goals because what I'm really nervous about is that I'm the CMO and our revenue didn't grow and now I'm out because I didn't grow our revenue. So, these, so understanding their pain points is really important for what I'm going to get into when we talk about create. So what you want to do is start to do your track mapping. So you've got your personas. You figured out how to segment them into one of these buckets. So now, for example, a lead comes in. They did an asset download, 14 ways to link social and SEO. They're VP director of marketing. They're in Boston. It's a tech B2B company, 100 million revenue. OK, that's someone I want to talk to. I'm going to put them in the local high value tech B2B engagement track. Um, it's 60 days. It's high touch, expensive offers. Um, so that means I'm going to offer to do an analysis for them or give them a training class or maybe I'm going to send them an expensive direct mail piece. And I'm going to put, you know, I'm, I'm going to also call them direct mail. I'm going to try to escalate them to an in-person meeting and I'm going to implement retargeting. I'm going to throw, you know, this is a perfect lead. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to throw everything at them with a high level of intensity. And then I'm going to do a brand drum beat. If they don't convert, if in 60 days I don't get a meeting with them, I'm not going to just forget about them. I'm going to put them into a drum beat and sort of stay in touch with them and stay on their radar screen. So what did we just go through? We just went through segment, you know, get the lead, append data to it, put it in a bucket, and match it to a track. Now, all of that 
your administrators are pretty good at that. They're like, okay, you know, you told me how you want to segment things, I got all that set up. But now this is where the pain lives. Create. This is where your Eloqua administrator can't really help unless they are just a very multi-talented individual who can do graphic design and copywriting and, and you know, they understand how to sell to people and all that stuff. So when you create, you're creating a sequence or a plan, you're messaging and offers, emails and calls to action, landing pages, call scripts, direct mail, all that stuff that goes into the nurture process. And it's not just email. That's what, you know, that's another misconception that marketing automation is just email. It's not. It's, it's all of these things that I've been talking about. So let's go through the mapping process and sort of creating an architecture for this. Here's a trigger. Someone came, they downloaded 14 ways to link social and SEO and they, they filled out um, my form. Okay. So we're going to do a nurture track, high value, tech B2B local, A tech local. We'll give it a nice, that's the A tech local list. Okay. So we're going to do a 60 day nurture program that after that, things are going to kind of like go into the drumbeat. And it's got three levels to it. It's got outbound nurture, it's got website nurture, it's got media nurture. So the first thing, they filled out the form. I'm hitting them without a reply. Thanks for filling out the form. We'd love to meet you. I'm your sales rep. Um, you know, if you need anything, we're 100% here for you. Maybe a link to case study, something like that. But usually, very brief. We've also set a, a cookie on their browser. So next time they come back to my website, I'm going to show them a tech B2B image on the home page. And I'm going to set an alert so that if this person comes back, the sales rep knows they came back and the system's going to tell the sales rep what they looked at. And retargeting cookie, I'm going to start hitting them with more thought leadership materials. Okay? Not the same one they downloaded, another one. Okay? So now the nurture starts. Okay? Oh, and by the way, um, this stuff obviously goes on for as long as I can keep it alive. As long as they don't delete their cookie, I'm going to try to stay with them. So, Second, call script, right? Hey, you know, we'd love to come in. We'd love to show you some case studies, give you a you know, presentation on how we approach tech B2B marketing for all these great companies. Um, and then a case study alert. So they get an email saying, hey, check out these case studies for companies like yours. Maybe we offer them, we drop a direct mail piece because they're a high value lead. And we say, hey, by the way, we'll come in and do free marketing automation training or free social media training or search engine optimization training. Again, maybe we, uh, we call them again and this time we kind of up the stakes and say, look, we'll do a free SEO audit or a free marketing automation evaluation and you know, we'll come in, we'll do a two hour consultation, we'll look at your stuff and we'll tell you what we think. No obligation. If you don't like what we have to say, you know, that's okay. If you like it but you don't buy, that's okay too. You know, if you get some good ideas out of it, we're happy. But, uh, you know, and, and this is why local is important because it's not a big deal for me to hop in the car, meet with someone for two hours, look at their stuff, tell them what I think, it's no skin off my back. Especially if they're the CMO of a big tech company. Hit them with another direct email piece, uh, maybe another email piece for a pre-recorded webinar, um, maybe final direct mail piece, and then maybe the call offering free training. So I sort of mapped out all these things. And then again, I don't want them to always see the same image. So I'm also starting to rotate in new images so that they get sequenced every time they come. It's another big company that we're doing, another big case study on the homepage. Um, and then, oh, by the way, you know, we're not showing them the same banner every time. We're sequencing them through different thought leadership materials. So this is like a full-on intense nurture campaign against a valuable local prospect. And then there's some specs. This is a one-time track only. I don't do this every time they fill out a form. Um, the, the goal is to 
escalate them to face to face. If they schedule a meeting, all of that stuff ends. Once we get the meeting, we're like, okay, we're, you know, nurture track ends. Um, if they engage with any kind of content, I'm gonna alert the salesperson. If they don't engage in 60 days, they go in a drumbeat. Um, this, these tracks I'm gonna leave alive for as long as I can, even if it goes beyond the 60 days. And um, retargeting, again, I'm gonna keep alive. So this is what you have to figure out. So everyone can do this. This is easy. Like you, anyone can imagine this track. This is the hard part. Now you gotta make all this stuff. It's kind of like building an entire website. Think about it. You gotta create your sequence flow. That's your wireframe, your sitemap. Four emails, four landing pages, two direct mail pieces, three call and voicemail scripts, four call to action images, six banner versions. Literally, it's like building a microsite. Every nurture campaign is like a microsite. So your eloquent administrator is not gonna do that. This is again where people really fall down. Now, hopefully you can use existing assets, but often you gotta have some interesting offers and interesting you know, infographics, checklists, videos. So literally this is the part that companies underestimate and the sales reps from these platforms don't kind of tell you this when you're signing up to buy it. Oh, by the way, you're literally gonna take on an amazing amount of creative work to make this work. So you gotta make all this stuff, package it all up and say, hey, a Primo or, or Eloqua administrator, here, load it up. And by the way, that's what we do. Now here's the other thing. I get a lot of questions like, well, how often should I send emails? Or what's the, av you know, what's the average return? Well, it depends on how good your creative is. You know, a lot of people go, oh, you know, television didn't work for us. Well, maybe you had a bad ad, right? Marketing automation creative has, has to be good for it to work. I mean, email on its own doesn't get people to do anything. You got good email, you got bad email. You have to do good creative and that's where your agency comes in or your in-house creative people. And the messaging development is very different. So you, you've got those brand people who come up with your brand and it's the big idea, it's universally appealing, it's portable across everything. You've got your campaign messaging, which has the brand, but is like a very quick hook. But again, it still has to have a relative amount of universal appeal. And then you've got your nurture messaging. Hyper-targeted and personalized. Escalating the sales process. Encouraging real dialogue. It's different. And again, you got one brand. You might be running three concurrent campaigns but you might need 20 different nurture tracks with unique messaging. So here's the process for coming up with good nurture messaging, right? First, start with personas and pain points. Who are these people? What is their pain? What do they need right now? Show you understand their pain and that you can help. Give them viable content they can use right now and then encourage behaviors that drive lead flow and conversion, right? Or drive them to pick up the phone and call you or schedule a meeting. So this is kind of like what you gotta package up. So I wanna prove this out a little bit. Uh, Google and Millward Brown in 2005 did a very interesting study that sort of changed the way we did all digital marketing. What they showed is that about 70% of what encourages the click for enterprise security and storage companies is in the benefit and the offer. Basically, it's like they're saying, here's how we're gonna help you, and this is what we got for you right now. And what I said to myself was, whoa, well, wait a second. This doesn't just apply to Tech B2B and Google Haiku. This applies to everything. It's like the one-two punch. I'm gonna help you, here's something you can do right now. Benefits, offers, benefits, offers. So, 
let's build a little benefit and offer matrix to be, you know, everyone's heard of a creative brief. Uh, you need that, but you also need to isolate benefit statements and offers that you can embed in these tiny little communication bursts that you're sending out to people. And people, they, they've got to click. They've got, like, people have got to get it right away. Now, this isn't necessarily the language you would use or the titles of the white papers. It's the gist of what you're trying to say. You're getting it as close as possible. So remember that, that persona? Here's their pain points. What keeps him or her up at night? I don't have time and talent to keep up with my to-do list. So how do you empathize with that? How do you find talent, get things done fast, get things done right? That's basically kind of like a benefit you're putting forward. So what's a little content? E-guide, find talent and conquer your digital to-do list. All site changes must go through IT. It can take days or weeks. Now, we've all experienced that. Take control of your marketing programs. Bypass IT. Get things done fast. Webinar. Lesson reliance on IT for digital marketing success, tools, and tactics. I need nurture programs that yield opportunities, not inquiries. Get sales to love your leads. Get prospects to want to talk to your reps. Marketing automation assessment, free nurture campaign optimization. So that's not a piece of content. That's an invitation for you to start engaging with my agency. And to take advantage of that, you gotta talk to me. Ad hoc, so finally, um, you know, Hitting revenue goals. If our online advertising or search presence is weak, conversion rates are low, our nurture campaigns are off, we aren't successful. Add Octane to your SCM, optimize conversion and hit your numbers. Conversion optimization case studies. Five companies that doubled ROI. Who's not gonna wanna look at that? So you could create, you could go on and on with this, but that's the point, is you gotta really narrow it down to the one-two punch. Benefit, offer, benefit, offer, because all your little communication pieces, whether it's a banner, whether it's a landing page, whether it's an email, whether it's a landing page, has got to hit those points. And you're just trying to get them to react. And really, nine times out of 10 with Tech B2B, what am I selling? Am I selling the product as a marketer? What do you think, am I selling the product? No, I am selling the action. And what is that action? To talk to me. I'm not, I'm not gonna sell you a million dollar agency relationship on a landing page. What I'm trying to sell you is a conversation with me. That's what you're selling. That's a much easier sale, by the way. So remember that it's not all about content. Everyone thinks, oh, we've developed all these content pieces and let's just lob content at people. And then on their own, they'll realize that they want to talk to us. You've got to mix it up. So your high value leads, that's where you know, you're selling the meeting. That's really what you're selling, at least in, in, in the scenario with me and a lot of tech B2B uh, you know, uh, marketers, right? High touch, high value offers, assessments, offers, customer reports, training, gifts, and I don't mean like you're giving them a gift, I mean you're taking them to a game, or you're having a dinner, or something like that. You're trying to get in front of them in person. You wanna spark dialogue. So remember, it's like you're trying to escalate the sale. What does that really mean? It doesn't just mean engagement, and having them download more white papers. It means actually having them go, okay, let's meet. And then it's multi-channel, email, phone, direct mail. Your general leads, people who you haven't scored, Yes, that's the thing you put in the brand drum beat, and you're trying to escalate them to a high value lead, but you don't know much about them or they're not volunteering that information yet. This is where you're really doing a lot of content marketing. And oh, by the way, it's not that these people don't get any of that, but there may be a period of time where they're getting an intense level of communication more geared towards selling the meeting, and then they're getting put into this bucket. So don't forget that all your offers don't have to be for a white paper. They can be like a simple offer like, hey, here's the value of talking with one of our experts. So Bill Stone over there gave me this example. 
um, and, and we do this a lot. Um, this is an example of taking existing assets, because sometimes what they're not going to do is pay you to redo a bunch of white papers, where it has a really boring title, and you just tweak the title, right? So when words won't show your story, seven tips for leading company, from leading companies for online video marketing, seven awesome video strategies to skyrocket customer engagement, conversion, and acquisition. Much better title. Right, you're gonna get a higher conversion rate out of that for marketing automation, from your banner, from anything that you do. <clears throat> so here's a, a, a quick case study. Um, this was Ipswich. Um, you know, they had this big dormant database. Um, and it was underperforming from a lead escalation standpoint. And they were batching and blasting. I mean, every couple of weeks they would send an email. And those, those rates of engagement were going down. So they replaced the batch and blast with a marketing automation program. And the triggers and campaigns were a manual trigger to wake people up and get them to engage. Once they engaged, to escalate the campaign for hand raisers, get them to like start sending more personalized communications where they're having a dialogue with a sales rep, retargeting to kind of uh, get back, you know, stay on the radar screen and CRM alert, alerts for all engagers. Um, and the, the trigger was manual. It was sort of like they would take a batch and they would manually trigger it. And uh, so again, it was about taking cold leads and warming them and escalating them to contact opportunities. So the nurture sequence flow was something like this. So it was a wake up campaign and so there were three high value assets and instead of just sending one and then going, well, what are we gonna send next? And what are we gonna send next? They decided on three pieces that they were gonna send out in a certain sequence. If someone interacted with any of those, then they got put into the escalation campaign, which was like, okay, they, they interacted now you're gonna get an email directly from a sales rep, you're gonna get a phone call, you're gonna get an email, you're gonna get a phone call, you're gonna get an email, you're gonna get a phone call. But they're not gonna do that for everyone on the list. They're gonna, get, they're gonna do that for the people who, first of all, they looked at the list and said, okay, out of, out of these thousands of people, who are the couple thousand that we actually wanna talk to, that we should be talking to? And now, who engaged with us recently? Also, if you hit a landing page, you're immediately retargeted. And of course, if you engage in any way, the salespeople were getting alerts, so they knew what you were doing. So again, this is, this is a lot of stuff to make, right? So here's wake up asset one, wake up email one, wake up landing page one, wake up asset two, Wake up email two, wake up landing page two. Here's wake up asset three. Now if this one doesn't get you, wake up email three and wake up landing page three. So that was the first, that was like wake up. All right, you know, let's see if we can get them to pay attention to something. And we're hitting them in, you know, a, 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 a shorter duration of time. Secondly, on the thank you page, there were other calls to action so that you would passively append. So if they did engage, we'd also say, oh, by the way, these are different things that might represent where you are in the sales process. Um, you know, like if you're willing to read, you know, um, all about the product, you actually are indicating that you're, you're investigating solutions. So, these secondary actions help to score the lead. Then there are a bunch of retargeting banners. And a lot of people don't realize they're being retargeted. They just think, oh, it's a huge company and I'm seeing their ads all over the place. And by the way, you don't have to be on Paul's fly fishing site, right? You can limit your retargeting to technology sites and news sites and things like that. And then the Escalate campaign started. So now it's hello, it's personalized to you. I, I blacked this out, but it's got the contact information. So you can you know, pick up the phone and call. You can hit reply on the email. 
So these are actual contacts. Hey, thanks for engaging with us. Um, by the way, here's more content that you might be interested in. So three escalation emails and then phone calls in between those. And essentially the results of, instead of just every couple weeks going, what are we gonna send out? Planning this whole sequence out and automating it, there was a four times lift in conversion and cold lead to warm lead escalation. Not 30% like in that ROI chart I showed you, 4X. Any questions? Yes. So I suppose if all of a sudden you're doing this and your subscribe rate, unsubscribe rate goes through the roof, you might put on the brakes. But if at the same time you're getting a bunch of hand raisers, so if, if, if you know five people aren't subscribing but three people are calling you on the phone, you might kind of go, all right, well, those people don't really care about us anyway. I mean, you know, you'd make that decision. The other is as in the first one I showed you where you have a business rule that says, if a meeting is set up and the salesperson goes in this, you know, the, the salesperson goes in the sales force and says, okay, we have a meeting, they can hit a stop button. So if, you've, if you're in that sort of um, high intensity communication period and you've achieved your goal of setting up the meeting, yes, you might, you might put on the brakes. Because at that point, you, you got what you want and you want less variables in the, in, in the mix. More questions? Sure. Okay. I had a question about sure. phone calls. So if someone's on a landing page, they fill it out, but the call action isn't call me. But you have you have different call scripts in your your lead nurture. What's the appropriate conversation for someone to just call that person? How do you without offending them or you know, interrupting? You know how do you deal with I will tell you that you don't want to let the haters get in the way of your lovers, okay? I have clients where, you know, we sent email and they got one angry email, hey, stop emailing me. They got like one complaint and they're like, don't email to anyone. I'm like, yeah, but what about like the 99,000 people that didn't complain? Right? So, so you're gonna offend a couple people. Some people are gonna think you're a pain in the ass. Excuse my language. But, I, unless that's like, an amazing amount of negative feedback, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Now, in terms of the call script, and that's where the data on that persona and the data you've built up and their recency of interaction with your brand and what they looked at comes in. So you have sort of this call script, hi, you know, I'm Harry from Overdrive Interactive, da 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 da. And if I'm looking at the fact that you just looked at my SEO page, I'd say, you know, um, we could do a free competitive rank analysis for you. You just give us a bunch of keywords, your competitors, I'll run a report, and meet with me for 30 minutes and I'll show you the results. So you try to make your dialogue have some variables in it that make it relevant. Um, so, you know, and that's what your salespeople are doing anyway. The only difference now is instead of calling people cold, they're calling people that are warm, that have a recency of interaction with you. Um, again, if people start complaining or you're offending them, uh, your creative is bad. Um, okay, uh, let's talk about launch. We're not gonna go deep into this and I'll tell you why, because this is the technical side of it. Um, this is the same as talking to people about good website design and then telling them how to do HTML code, okay? So with launch, I mean, you're gonna have someone in your organization go in now and take the plan you've given them and the designs and the copy and all that stuff and they're gonna set up in Eloqua all the, or a Primo or Marketo or Acton, all of those sequences. And then they're going to, you're gonna tell them what you wanna measure. 
But let me just say this. I don't want to undervalue their role, okay? You have a tech team, you, you shouldn't just hand it to them. You should collaborate with them, all right? Because you might not get everything right, first of all. So, but you should do the assemblance of your plan and then sit down with them and present it to them. Collaborate with them because they're going to go, you know, you can't really do this or, hey, this might be a better way to do this. They're going to have great ideas for you. So I'm not sort of cutting them out of it, but I'm saying you got to do a lot of the fundamental planning, show them the sequence, get their feedback, go back, make all the creative, show them, get their feedback, and then package it up so you can hand it to them and go here. And at the end of the day, they're going to go, thank you. That is great. Now they're not chasing you around for the next email or the next landing page. And then schedule monthly meetings with them to go over the results. And they're going to say this email worked, this one didn't, and you're going to be able to optimize. So your quick key takeaways, start with the obvious. Auto replies, high volume, high value. Limit your personas. Don't over customize because you won't be able to do all the creative against it. Develop your benefits and offers, right? Empathize with people, you know, tell them how you're going to help them, what do you got for them right now, and sell the meeting. Not jet, don't just throw content at them, actually try to get them to talk to you. Don't limit your channels and creative, so emails plus calls to action, direct mail, phone calls, retargeting. Package it all up. Don't piecemeal it. That's the other thing is a lot of people, I see them, they're like 50% you know, through their implementation and then they get stuck. It's like get it all done in one neat package and track and optimize. That's the next seminar.